Welcome to Prophecy in the News. I'm your host, Kevin Clarkson. Thank you for joining us this week. We're talking with Christopher Emery, a producer, uh, been an actor, been a model, uh, for a while was a freelance sports photographer. You've lived on both sides of the camera, it sounds like, most of your life. I have. Uh, very, very blessed. Um, so we got to see how things are made in front of the camera and then the business side and production side behind the camera. Well, you'll be new to our viewers, but uh, others may know you well. Uh, Chris came into really a, a lot of attention when he produced uh, the documentary A Noble Lie. We'll be doing a separate program on that that you want to be sure to catch about the Oklahoma City bombing and the fact that there were other factors involved besides the official explanation that was giving, given. One thing that opened up, I think, in a lot of people's minds uh, were some other questions about what we're told, uh, how we often are as a public manipulated in directions and uh, opinion, and that's kind of opened a whole, if you will, can of worms. That led you to produce State of Mind, which was Psychology of Control. Yes. And then you followed that up with, I think, maybe just the blockbuster Shadow Ring, which is ultimately about a globalist agenda. That's correct. Uh, for our world. The, uh, the Oklahoma City case, and we develop on that in another episode, was more of a, a microcosm. It was local. Um, then ended up, of course, being an international uh, tragedy. Uh, then we did the uh, State of Mind Psychology of Control, the psychology behind that, and we developed on how we're controlled from birth until the day we die. Shadow Ring is more of a macrocosm. It brings together, okay, not only we do know the manipulation exists, who's actually doing it, but why? That's so we right. develop on that more on a larger scale. Again, very academic, very historical approach. All of our information is based on well-sourced, triple-check facts, and a lot of it uh, supplied by the U.S. government. Exactly, and uh, to reiterate again, you seek to be uh, nonpartisan in a political mm -hmm. way and full of critical thinking and as you said, verifiable sources. Mm -hmm. So it's really not chasing a lot of just fringe conspiracies. That's correct. And uh, that's, that's uh, why we were brought on board very solid, especially in our second film on the academic community. Because if you pass the muster with both liberal and conservative universities, they see your discernment, the level of uh, your research, then uh, we're getting the two thumbs up from them. We knew we were at least on the right track. Sadly, though, when laid alongside what we're told publicly, this appears to be an alternative, doesn't it, to history? Yes, it, it always does. Um, so and, uh, it makes you question the official version. I had a chance to work for a major media outlet for, uh, as an intern for four and a half years. So, again, uh, seeing how the news is manipulated even on a local level, and it just gets worse as you go up on the international level. I was in Europe, um, just got back a week and a half ago. Uh, I was in Europe for three weeks just to see the, the latest developments on what's going on with our government and to see how the foreign press is taking it. They're literally spoon-fed by mm -hmm. mainstream media here in the U.S. thinking it is fact. And it really had to bite my tongue, and I thought, wow, um, that just puts an even bigger magnifying glass when you see what's going on overseas. So, Shattering, um, you were asking me to develop on the name. Yes, I'm fascinated by your name. I thought yeah. of, obviously, you know, the, uh, the, the Fellowship of the Ring. Mm -hmm. and it, it, and the one ring that's to correct. bind them all in the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if the, the camera could catch this or not, but uh, the, the film is actually based on two books written by uh, best-selling author James Perloff, who's actually become a very good friend of our crew. Um, I talked to him last week uh, when I was just getting back from my overseas trip about this interview and some of the things he wanted me to develop on. Mm -hmm. uh, Shadows of Power was uh, released in 1988, sold over 300,000 copies. I believe it's in its third or fourth re uh, reprint on that. We based it on the entire book of Shadows of Power, the follow-up with Truth is a Lonely Warrior, and we took the first seven chapters out of that book. We met James uh, Perloff. Uh, we was here in Oklahoma City doing a PowerPoint presentation on Shadows of Power. Anyway, uh, we asked him after the presentation, our, our executive director of our first film approached him and said, we'd love to make a, a film on your books. What do you think? So we uh, negotiated uh, you know, an agreement on that. And the PowerPoint presentation he had would have been, been ended up making a six and a half hour film. Obviously, we My can't goodness. release that. So we really had to pare it down. We took the best of the best of that information, condensed a lot of it. And uh, as far as the name, yes, we did want to hit both the, the older and the younger generation. Um, the uh, Lord of the Rings films were uh, hot back in 2013, but we also wanted to incorporate part of, of the title of the film, so or Shadow. the book, so Shadow Ring, so we came together. 
and it does just like our other films um, it is a very it's a family oriented film nothing uh, extreme on it um, it's appropriate for anywhere from age 4 to 84 and uh, very academic approach to the subject matter well very good just before we dive in and I'm mm -hmm. really eager to do that let me just give a little scriptural uh, basis for why we have this narrative um, again we're talking about a globalist agenda and if you go to the Word of God you discover that that has always been um, first of all the Lord's plan was to bring all people nations tribes tongues together in salvation we, re we read in Revelation 7 where John sees a multitude no man could number of those who have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb and they are worshiping and saying worthy is the lamb for you were slain and they're from every ethnicity every tribe every tongue under the globe God created all the different ethnic peoples of the earth but what we find in the book of Genesis God told them to have dominion and scatter and spread over the earth and after the flood of Noah they tried to congregate and concentrate under mm -hmm. Nimrod and Nimrod whose name in Hebrew means we will rebel led the people to build a tower with the supposed aim of making a name for themselves and what they were doing actually was defying God's government and they were going to establish humanitarian humanist rule on the planet and that theme really runs throughout scripture with all the pagan empires you have Egypt and then you have Babylon you have Assyria Persia all of these are trying to build a mammoth global empire and they've all come short and in the book of Daniel he's given a vision of a series of beasts or animals because God views government uh, not as some benign thing but as a beast that has to be tamed but cannot be tamed and just to cite Daniel 7 uh, before we proceed with our interview he describes it this way he said after this I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible strong exceedingly it had great iron teeth it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the other beasts that were before it and it had ten horns now that's one verse plucked out but it's actually saying that this final empire and that was Rome in, in Daniel's succession that was Rome the first time but there'll be a final coming together that's an ultimate fulfillment notice that it has teeth that chew up and spit out and feet that stamp and crush everything and that's what the final one world government's going to do and we see this beast again in the book of Revelation where it's the Antichrist so that's just to tell everybody we're not just mm -hmm. out here talking about an idea today the scripture says that as the world rushes toward the return of Christ we're going to see these pieces coming together for a one world government and a one world economy right. and a one world belief system and that's the sovereignty is going right out the window you're not going to have the ability to speak for yourself or stand up for yourself your liberty's yeah. gone and in the trailer um, that uh, we have I believe it, it is run on their, our website too but uh, on the um, uh, the DVD uh, t tyranny in its worst form is going to come together and uh, we might as well be in a, a, a giant uh, worldwide prison at that point that's right I'm not being extreme this you have to tell it for what it is and what it's not you know it's this is black and white this there's no gray area here you know it's it's going to be pretty severe I, I watched the documentary in full mm -hmm. and I don't remember if you quoted or not but I believe Lord Atherton said, you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, yeah, the, the Rothschilds, uh, the 128 of the most powerful families. We, we do cite uh, the different uh, financial institutions, the Federal Reserve Bank, for, and I did some research on them years ago, even before I got into the Oklahoma City case. Mm -hmm. um, it's unaccountable. There, is, there are no quarterly statements, just to give an example. Um, it's not part of the United States government. The Federal Reserve's never yeah. been audited. That's correct, and it's about as federal as Federal Express, not to be trite, but I mean, it's it is. Is a name only. And we've said there's, yeah. there's no reserves there, it's not a bank, and that's it's not federal. That's correct. It's yeah. again that lingual, uh, lingual manipulation we talked about with that's language. Right. So, I'm, you know, it constantly, I'm, I'm perplexed why when congressional hearings come up where they have the Federal Reserve chairman, what the, you might as well be dealing with a private bank here. Why even have the hearings? It makes absolutely no sense. There is no substance to it. It's all show window dressing and um, people need to know more about what's really going on going back to the younger generation you and I aren't going to be here forever so we have to leave them some type of a legacy and again that was our 
our humble attempt at, at these films, at least give people a foundation of information to work on. Well, a lot of these things are rooted in ancient past, but your documentary actually begins to deal with them in the life of the United States, I would say, yes. since our inception and correct. going forward, correct? We, uh, we, we uh, had a chance to go back uh, to the 1700s, but we thought, okay, if we really want to be concise, we're starting with the Spanish-American War, mm -hmm. and we proceed up to the Vietnam War, just shy of the first Gulf War conflict. And we do hint on that a little bit. We didn't go into 9-11 at all. But um, an interesting twist to this, the narrator for the film, Kevin Sorbo, a lot of your uh, older actors or uh, audience may uh, remember him as Hercules' Legendary Journeys. And then he went on to act in a, a very successful sci-fi uh, series called Andromeda, mm -hmm. based, uh, it was filmed in Vancouver. Kevin is, uh, if you get on to imdb.com, his profile, you see a phenomenal uh, a resume of, of work he's done. Very family-oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, very blessed to have gotten to know him, uh, talked to him several times on the phone, uh, met him uh, in person uh, two, three times. He starred in the God's Not Dead movie. Exactly. Two years and ago. Uh, was uh, Professor uh, Jeffrey Radisson. Mm -hmm. uh, his character uh, had passed away in that, that series, uh, in that, that film. But uh, we were, uh, the film came out in June of 2015, released it on DVD. He was still in the coattails and the success of God's Not Dead. So mm -hmm. we're able to, he's helping us promote the film on, on that uh, whole issue there. And then, of course, the faith-based uh, film community, by the way, which is huge. Yes. Which is dwarfing a lot of what's coming out in, in Hollywood now. A lot of these top uh, directors, including uh, 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 Oliver Stone, are realizing the potential of getting the message out and, of course, the revenue stream. So we were very fortunate to be able to tap into a lot of different bases on that film. Kevin came on board after only reading half of the script. <laughs> and he's, he liked the message. He um, certainly has doesn't think in, in the norm of the media. And um, you know we were constantly communicating by his Facebook page and just a wonderful guy to work with. So he really adds a lot of credence to this, not only because of his star power, but because he thinks outside the box. And he's able to present this information in a very clear, concise, very professional manner. So we're very blessed to have him on board there, too. That's great. Yeah. Let me just stop and mention the product to our viewers. We yeah. haven't talked about it enough yet in depth that you may realize how valuable it will be. So keep listening. Uh, but just to say right now, Shadow Ring is the name of this documentary. It's over two hours long. And uh, it's available for nineteen ninety five plus shipping and handling. Go to our website or call the 800 number on your screen. Uh, we also have a package of all three of these. DVDs that our guest Chris Emery has produced, Shadow Ring being the latest. Prior to that, State of Mind, The Psychology of Control and How the Masses are Manipulated in Opinion. And then before that, what kicked it off, an award-winning documentary, A Noble Lie, specifically about the Oklahoma City bombing, which we'll be doing a separate program on as well. And we had a separate program on State of Mind. Uh, let me just, um, boy, I don't know where to dive in. We could talk about the series of wars mm -hmm. or, the, or the creation of the Federal Reserve, the League of Nations, the United Nations. But let's, let's pull the curtain back and say who's behind all this. It was, a, um, I think, a, a chain of, of, of history. The, the, the power, you have to look at who's actually, for lack of a better term, who moves the chess pieces around the board. Who are the most powerful families the in the world? The powers behind the throne. Exactly. That you never hear mentioned much. That, yes. Uh, the Rothschilds, the, the Mellons, the Carnegies, the, uh, uh, the Rockefellers. I mean, hey, you know, you, you wealth begets wealth, whether it be in a good or a bad way. They had a vested interest in making sure that not only their dynasty was perpetuated for future generations, but that their allies that brought them to the point where they were at the time, whether it be in the 1700s, 1800s, the discovery of oil, in the late 1890s in Pennsylvania and, of course, here in Oklahoma and California. You're looking at these families and you're seeing how do they deal with their operations from day to day? What are the consequences? Who are they leaving at the, at the wayside? Mm -hmm. Who are they actually just walking over or destroying or taking advantage of? And it got to the point where they were getting so big and so greedy and so selfish about their, their goals or whether it be allied with others that... Uh, they had to manipulate and create wars to get bigger. They were feeding upon themselves. So having said that, when you watch the film, we progress from the Spanish-American War, the start of uh, World War I, the Lusitania, World War II, um, 
the, the complete lie that, that uh, you know, as far as Poland attacking Germany and so forth. Uh, and then you go into the Vietnam War, the Korean War, at uh, Pearl Harbor. Uh, that was, my gosh, that was a travesty there. Uh, the War Department trying to frame uh, Admiral uh, Kimmel and General Short. Come to find out they're in front of a congressional committee two years after the war. They're exonerated of all responsibility of, of uh, falling flat on their face. Mm -hmm. We have ironclad documentation and proof that the Roosevelt administration knew about the attack 10 days in advance. And they did nothing about it. They chose to do nothing about it. And the they lives sat on it. It's, it's it. It's all developed. 2,300 lives were lost that Sunday morning in the attack of Pearl Harbor because of that. You also mentioned the Vietnam War and the, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the start of that as far as bringing the U.S. in, and it was the same kind of thing. Yes, and uh, th we developed a little bit on the, on the CIA and what they, uh, what they did. Uh, the, the fake uh, Gulf of Tonkin uh, attack never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, North Vietnamese weren't responsible for that. Uh, you know, but McNamara and, and the Johnson administration chose to fabricate lies out of whole cloth. It was unbelievable. So the, the current leaders, in fact, you know, when I was in Europe, I saw, of course, they had the, uh, the inauguration of uh, swearing in of the new French president. Youngest guy ever elected, mm -hmm. 39 years old. And it's like, wow, this is screaming. Not only for not only was that election manipulated, but he's going to be in power for a very long time. Uh, I'm not sure if they... What the and they have limits. multiple terms or I, I, limits? I'm not, Do you yeah, know? in France, I'm not sure. They changed it since Charles de Gaulle was in, but I thought, wow. Here they have somebody that's groomed to the likeness that's going to follow the, at the beck and call of the powers that be that are actually running the show. Shadows of Power takes a more responsible um, it, look back as a third party and say, okay, not only is this going on, but... Who's doing it? Why? And what can be done about it? We still have some control over this. Again, show the younger generation because they're the ones that are going to have to deal with the consequences of this. It goes and forward. Yes, yeah. it does. And, and let's talk about the dollar and the markets and the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. um, basically, as your uh, documentary points out, except for some blips during war when there was incurred cost, and I mean the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, not right. the kind of wars we're talking about here. But from 1776 until about 1915, mm -hmm. the dollar was pretty stable and constant. Sure. And since the Federal Reserve was established, it has lost about 95 to 7 percent of its power. It's worth 3 percent of what it was today. Exactly. It was um, in uh, January of 1913. The bill, uh, 16th Amendment, was not actually ratified. Um, but it, the, the bill had passed through the House, I believe it was Christmas Eve of 1912. January nice 19, timing. yeah, January 1913. Like Obamacare. Oh my gosh, it it was horrible. In fact, Char we found that Senator Lindbergh, Charles Lindbergh's dad, objected to the on the floor, the yeah, uh, the legislation, and he knew what was going to come down the pipe. Woodward Wilson, before he passed on, uh, he was uh, almost an invalid at the time. He regretted for signing that act. He said it was the worst thing he could have ever done for the country. Well, our yeah. Constitution says that Congress is supposed to mm -hmm. control the power of the currency, That's and they right. gave it away. And, of course, that brings up the whole Jekyll Island uh, mm -hmm. uh, meeting, and you have that, um, that expert, uh, the author of that book. Yes, uh, G. Edward Griffin was in uh, our, uh, both the Shadows of uh, State of Mind, Psychology of Control, and Shadows mm -hmm. of, uh, Ring. But he goes back into the Jekyll Island where the, the top, uh, the wealthiest of the wealthy, took the train down to Georgia in and secret. met in secret. And they said, okay, if we want to implement this, what's going to happen? Who are we going to buy off in Congress? Uh, some of uh, the top aides for Woodrow Wilson were in the pocket of the bankers of, you know, of, of the world. We're not talking local or national bankers. These people were controlling currency worldwide and the, the stock markets and the, um, the trading floors and everything. So it was manipulated. It was and still is. Um. It's 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 fascinating to to realize that, and I I think I understand a relationship as mm -hmm. as interest is is held down, which it's been now for many many years. The market just continues to rise. Yes, and they even give evidence in the documentary that the 1929 stock market uh, really was precipitated by planning mm -hmm. of the insiders, and so when the crash came, they were able to well they got out before, right. and after it crashed, they ran back in and bought for ten cents on the dollar and got ownership of so many American corporations. Interesting twist on that. Charlie Chaplin uh, had the insider information. 
he You're became, talking about the film producer? Uh, yes, and the actor. And was he, he was a U.K. C citizen, wasn't he, uh, from birth? I, I or was he also a U.S. citizen? He was a U.S. citizen. He was against uh, entering World War uh, II. And, uh, but uh, he also had, uh, he became wealthy because of the stock market crash, but he took a lot of his wealth and gave it back to the charities. He, in, in a way, he, he saw the, the storm coming, but he wanted to kind of uh, not only uh, set himself up, but a lot of the poor and his friends he knew were going to be just completely devastated by it. And that's a legacy that a lot of people don't know about him. And we found that out through a lot of our back uh, door research on this. And uh, I talked to his grandson on a completely different project uh, last December and uh, off camera we're doing a making of documentary. And he, he um, basically verified a lot of that, that uh, Charlie Chaplin really, he, he knew the powers that be and what they were doing and he was smart enough to take advantage of it for the good of the people that were going to be completely devastated by it. So Wow, anyway. I did not know that. Yeah. That's fascinating. What uh, with the shadow ring do you uh, do you come out with telling folks we can do about such a situation? It's rather it's it rather like a little effusion against Gulliver. Well, it it is. You can look at it that way, and uh, that's that's a valid point to some extent. What we try to do with the film, again, uh, with with our all of our films, here's the information. This is what's going on. These are the people that are causing the problems. You have the ability to take back your country, and to answer your question directly. Yes, that's what I wanted to hear. Um, both on the local and the county and the state level. The federal government doesn't have any power over, the, over the, the state governments. And I'm very proud to have lived here in Oklahoma for 12 and a half years to see what the state legislature and the state senate have done, mm -hmm. not only for firearms, but for um, a lot of other land rights, uh, medical right. marijuana, it, to be responsible and say, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna draw a line in the sand here and the federal government can only come so far. We realize what our rights are. And if they want to try to encroach, we have the power to say not only no, but these are the reasons why. And it's all legally, it's not done on emotion, it's not done on conspiracy. But uh, in fact, our state constitution, uh, Al Gore, or uh, Vidal Gore's um, grandfather was, was a author, co-author of the state constitution. And it clearly spelled out that there was, there was a line in the sand there. The, we will only go so far to abide by federal laws and Oklahoma is one of the pioneer states of that that's so amazing yeah we, we take that, that and extrapolate it back to the local level and that's where you have your power so all politics is local at that point absolutely and that is absolutely. still very true yeah. our constitution as you know and mm -hmm. I think the film even mentions that you know there was such a separation of powers the founders knew mm -hmm. that absolute power would corrupt they were fleeing that in in, oh, in the, Europe the crown the British crown yeah yeah and they came over here and so they made three branches of government uh, you know, we have the executive and the judicial and the legislative, and they separated them. But we also have really three layers of, of government. Layers, not branches, but layers there. You have uh, federal, state, and even county. Mm -hmm. And they claim in any given county, at least in Oklahoma, maybe by what, you know, uh, was done in our Constitution, but uh, your county sheriff's your first line of defense yes. there. Yes, and that, that was an interesting twist. We'll develop on that in a noble lie. Yeah, I we'll look forward to talking in. with you okay. about that. But uh, the shadow ring, uh, for me, uh, as I've told you before we taped the show, I read Mr. Perloff's book uh, some years ago, and yes, it was eye-opening uh, to me to realize what is going on. And, and, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but out of that whole time period where you have Jekyll Island, the creation of the Federal Reserve, the World War I, I mm -hmm. believe their plan was to come out of there with the United States being under the League of Nations. That's correct, which is now the United Nations. And, of yes. course, uh, our Senate would not do that. No. They knew the danger, and praise God, they did not mm -hmm. go under the League of Nations. But what I didn't realize until I watched your documentary was, well, Plan B was to create the Council on Foreign Relations in 1921, yes. seeing that the U.S. wasn't going to go along with the League. And the CFR, for those who don't know this, uh, it doesn't matter who's in office, Republican, Democrat, it does not matter. You go back and look. The cabinets of the leadership of our areas of government are staffed and stocked three-fourths or more with CFR members oh who yeah. are basically towing a party line, not Republican or Democrat, but globalist. Mm -hmm. It's a globalist agenda. 
That's correct. And in, in, we, we uh, list uh, 35 of the who's who in the last uh, 20 years, mm -hmm. all the way from George Bush to uh, the, the Bill Clinton cabinet to, to George W. Bush and now with Obama. And uh, even Trump has a few CFR exactly, members. Exactly. Um, wow. And he's not a globalist, at least no. by declaration. And, 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 and that's where this election was, was so eye opening and different for me. And those who receive our magazine, I've written several articles on it. But just the globalist agenda, it w I believe, and, and we don't discuss a lot uh, in these videos about the end of time and the return of Christ as much as how we're getting up to that stage. But this is going to usher in that final time because, mm -hmm. as you said, there'll be such a tyranny, loss of liberty that the only deliverance for mankind will be the return of the Lord. I uh, do want to say that we, this is a two hour and 17 minute, uh, the director's cut. We have an hour and 47 minute version uh, that uh, we were asked to put together in what they call a TV treatment, three segments for the History Channel and A&E. Really? They'd approached us two years ago, right, uh, right after it uh, was released. The distributor we were working for had gone out of business, but I uh, just got an overture um, about a month ago, right before I went to Europe to the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, that uh, they are interested in again. So I encourage your uh, your listeners to uh, purchase the film when it comes out in the uh, the, the TV treatment, the uh, the the shorter version. We're going to offer that on DVD too. So All right. Okay. Well, our guest has been Chris Emery. We're talking about he's a producer of some fine documentaries, Shadow Ring, the globalist agenda, and what's going on with our financial markets and our world politics, uh, state of mind the way that the public opinion is directed and manipulated and controlled in a collective sense that you can be in the midst of a stream of and not even know that you're floating downstream. That's a scary thing. All started with his big uh, introduction documentary, A Noble Lie, which you'll want to catch our show on about the Oklahoma City bombing, that the official explanation and narrative does not bring forth all the facts as they need it. I look forward to discussing that with you. As we finish out, we want to tell you it's not gloom and doom. As he said, we need to stand. We are Americans. We do have rights. The preamble of the Constitution starts with we the people. And despite the lobbyists, the globalists, the powers that be, it is our job, and we answer to God, I believe, for how we participate in our government. We, you, God picked you. He let you be born in this nation at this time. You've lived as most of the world in history has not lived. You've had liberties you take for granted, and so do I, that virtually most of the world's inhabitants have never had. What are you doing with them? It's up to us to be responsible. Also, spiritually, you need to know Christ, and if you don't, he's the one who's going to give you eternal life and really help you weather all these storms that are coming. So call on his name and trust him. Till then, we'll keep looking up.